and I grew up in a country that my whole life I was told I was a bad guy. My whole life I was told my ancestors did evil. My whole life I was told uh, all we killed, we raped, we pillaged, we genocided, we colonized, we did all these things. Yet everybody I knew was like really nice. And that never added up. And uh, then ultimately I started to see that there was a pattern. And I think the best way really to not hate each other is, is to not force everybody to try to live together. Like for example, America, was a white country okay it was a was a white country until about 1965 now of course there was always the black minority and there was issues there uh slavery and whatnot and then the civil war uh jim crow and stuff like that however i think to some extent a lot of this stuff was blacks and whites figuring out how to uh how to live in the same country and how to keep boundaries and separation between communities so that hatred didn't foster and uh, now we have this elite, if you will, this this globalist, multicultural, financial elite that is running our societies, and they're saying open all your borders. Uh, like I think, I think the the concept of simply just like love everybody sounds nice, but in terms of a practical way of running a country, it's not really actually anything. It doesn't really mean anything. So you could say. Uh, love everybody, but what does that mean? Does that mean we should open the border? Does that mean we should let Mexicans flood into our country and take our jobs and push down our wages, raise the rents on, on properties in our country? Like, I, I don't think so. That, that, that doesn't help us. Like, on some level, there, people do form themselves into tribes, nations, races, uh, countries. And uh, wh white people have done that in the past, and that has now been taken from us. Um, and, and so we're just simply trying to get it back. So it's not, I think, I think there's an aspect of white nationalism that it, that it is talked about as if it's all about hate, but it's not, it's about giving white men back the nation, something to be proud of. And that will then, you know, that struggle in that struggle that we, that we make, we make the struggle for our nation and that struggle builds the kind of character that you're talking about. We build the character uh, to be to be better men than we would have otherwise been. It's during the during the civil rights movement, so-called civil rights movement. And by the way, I grew up in Alabama, under the Jim Crow laws. I had to work in cotton fields and run the plantation, help run the plantations and things like that. And uh, but when the civil rights movement started, the 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 biggest one of the biggest mistakes they made was to force integration. Yeah. They should not have had forced busing. They should not have had white people force white people to let black people live in their communities. You can't make someone love you. Prior to the civil rights movement, normal black people were happy living, just living where they were living, doing what they were doing, creating their own communities. Uh, we were taught not to hate anyone, that they're good and bad in all societies and that we should treat people the way we would like to be treated. They were not trying to live in white communities, and they didn't think there was anything wrong with living where you know in your own community. It's only when the civil rights movement started that uh, they started pushing those ideas. It was a horrible mistake to do that, to force bus and busing and all that. It never worked, and it never will work. And real love don't mean that you leave your borders open. As a matter of fact, it means that you shut the borders down because you would know that enemies are coming across the borders. You don't want illegal aliens coming in. They're coming in with different so-called principles or ideas, which does not relate to what this country is about. I think it's a horrible mistake that they have brought in all these different races by from different countries. Those people's values are different than the American values. Multiculturalism, for example, doesn't work. Like, you would agree with that, right? Right. I think that part of, of a healthy society is accepting that race is real that people prefer and gravitate towards others of their own race that is how people naturally choose to associate given the freedom to do so and therefore there is nothing wrong with building nations around races that is perfectly fine that is in fact preferable and again it's not about hatred if we want to create hatred the best way to create hatred would be to bring a bunch of people of different races and cultures together in one space and tell them you have to share this space. Wouldn't you agree with that? I, I mean, well, I, I'm being attacked on a number of fronts, heterosexual, white, right. et cetera. 
um you know that's that that's those are the those are the those are the places on on which uh white people are being attacked and i think that like to you know what whites have a right to defend ourselves as whites like we we are you would agree like there's this massive anti-white uh propaganda out there there's this there's this narrative from the media and that we have to counter that and tell them like no that's not the case and i think that uh, many people the alt-right has concluded that white people in order to defend ourselves from these attacks we we have a right to sort of collectivize to get together as whites to fend off these attacks and they're not going to work well there are men and women who believe that white people have a right to live where they want um, marry who they want make you know discriminate when they want you have a right to all those things and when the children of the lie call you white, they say this white man is a racist and this white man want to hold you back. You have to realize they're blind and they can't see and they are pointing out your color because they want others to hate your color, hate you because of your color. But if, 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 if uh, men and women had character, they would see it's not you, but it's something else inside of you that's driving you to do right or drive you to do wrong. Most black people, not all, not all, not all, but most, cannot see that their true enemies are the the Congressional Black Caucus, Jesse Jackson, Louis Farrakhan, Al Sharpton, uh, Barack Obama, the fallen messiah, Big Mama Michelle, and most of the black preachers. Those are the enemies of black people and not white folks. Well, the conservatives, we call them cucks. They've been trying this whole, oh, you know, it, it, you need love in your heart and, you know, just, it, you know, it, you could be from any race. We could all get together and we just got to have the same principles and religion. And they've been trying that for, for since the 1960s and they've been but failing they don't at know every what step. Love is. Well, why, why is it that this type of love and <clears throat> this idea that you don't focus on race is only, uh, it, it's only put out there to white countries, to the populations of white countries. Why is that? I mean, there's not anybody. That's a good question. There's not anybody that I know of that's going to tell the Jews over in Israel. Other, I mean, there are a few outliers, but the mainstream opinion is not that the Jews in Israel should not have an ethno state, and nobody is uh, <clears throat> trying to force flood a whole bunch of white people into Mexico or a whole bunch of non-Africans into Africa. It just doesn't happen. And right. the, it's always, it's a white country. It doesn't matter where that white country is. We're told that we alone are not allowed to focus on race, that, that there's either some magic soil here that if people are born on this, then they're American or English or German or whatever, and or that there's some magical document. And that if we just... Uh, teach these people, if we make sure before they come in here, it doesn't matter what race they are, if we make sure that they understand the Constitution, why, we'll have a million budding brown Thomas Jeffersons coming in <laughs> here. And that's that that has never been the case. It's never and the, fa- the case. And the founders knew that it wouldn't be the case because they founded an explicitly white nationalist nation, the first yeah. one broadly white nationalist in history. The same men who signed the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution passed the first Immigration Act of the United States that lasted for a long, long time, and it said to be a citizen of these United States, you had to be a free white person of good character. That's the Immigration Act of 1790. And this great nation was built as a white nation, and it was built as a republic. And you're never going to have a republic, an actual republic, that is functional when you have all these... uh, different groups and and people can blame it on identity politics or or whatever but that's just going to exist and it's been proven throughout yeah. history that it's going to exist every great nation or empire started off as a one race nation or empire and once it started a multicultural experiment that quickly that among other things quickly led to its downfall romans ottomans yep <laughs> 